die a bloody pauper unless you take a few risks. You both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone. But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we stop. Got ourselves competition already. That's our ship. Well, uh, in that case, come on, you lot. No point in getting killed. Second worm gets the cheese and all. Um, second mouse gets the cheese, no? Nobody's getting any damn cheese! Now move it! You're more cunning than you look. I thought we had oh. fight on our hands. Thank you, Gibble Book. Everything all right out there? You sound a bit shaken, boss. Hang on while I find the key. No more prayers. Only dust and silence. Ancient, indecipherable text covers the plaque. A dead tongue. Whoever worshipped here must be long gone.
I've had better days, and worse ones. No lock, no handle. How does it open? Much for peace. Very well. Allow me to demonstrate. This place wasn't built for the living.
Best avoid that trap. scribes, but no sign of a struggle. Looks like someone wanted to bury their secrets. lighter than it should be with such a massive lock. As the lock opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. What was once script is now an obliterated scrawl. You have a sense these are names, a list, but of what? Gods, these are the names of gods. Once lost, but now restored after the second sundering. The last three names in this book sit close together, but are so devastated by the scroll as to be unreadable. Entire pantheons have dwindled and been reborn, silently recorded by this book. Anyone worship the scribe of the dead. for you.
Come on. Can't stay idle. these mortals be. Eat this! Blood comes easy these days. Can't slow down. Let's have a look at the loot. It isn't for your pockets only. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Because that would be senseless. Wilt thou answer my question? So, I ask again, what is the worth of a single mortal life? A life and how it is lived are different equations. Very well. I... I'm satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell.
something over there. No use digging with my bare hands. Broken. Must have been here a while. I hear shouting up ahead. Don't fancy getting my hands dirty. I need a shovel. What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Sevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! By the nine hells! Open the gate! blade and suffer its sting Escape. 
Sometimes the only way out is through. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Behold the dance of death. That was the last of them. Inside, all of you, more may follow. Open the gate! been a long day. Better stop to rest soon. Children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too! Unbelievable! And who the hell are you again? Show some respect. This man saved your pathetic life. Well, I didn't ask for any goddamn help. Please, you were begging me to open the gate. Anything to save yourself, you coward! The human's eye twitches. He's about to blow. You're right. There's too much at stake. Worried about your precious eyes, the both of you. Enough! Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. More goblins could be on their way. Time to pack. We need to leave. Forgive that display. Aradin's a blowhard, but that's no cause for me to join him. Thank you for your help out there. I'm Zevlor. Well met. I should warn you, visitors are no longer welcome in this grove. Whatever your business, I'd see to it quickly. The druids are forcing everyone out. This attack will only strengthen their resolve.
There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. We're no fighters. Goblin got you. The druid Halsin's a renowned healer, but he didn't make it back from Aradin's expedition. If it's not too serious, you could try his apprentice, Nettie. She's with the other druids in the inner grove. They've withdrawn there to prepare this damn ritual of theirs. I've tried. Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though? I know it's not your business, but she owes you for saving this place. Perhaps you could persuade her for more time to prepare, if nothing else. Really? We're messengers now? We'd owe you a great debt. If we're forced to leave now, we won't make it to the city. You'll find the druids at the heart of the grove. Please, make them see sense before more lives are lost. Refugees, adventurers, no one in years, and suddenly we're overwhelmed. Well met, and thank you for beating back those goblins. Most brave of you. Is there anything you need? Act fast if you do. The ritual will be complete before too long. Just some bits and bobs I no longer need. Sylvanas, guide your path. I won't leave them behind. To get us killed. Bells, we can't just leave. They're kin. I'll not gamble our lives, our futures, on people who are as good as dead. We must leave for Baldur's Gate at once. Can we all just take a moment, please? What's the point in blades and spells if we don't bloody use them? We should stay. These people aren't fighters. We can help. Or yell louder. That's fine too. I made no such oath and I will not be held responsible for these people. Just be responsible for yourself then. We have to stay. It's the right thing to do. Zerg! Fine. We'll stay. If we survive, it'll make for a good story, I suppose. Thank you, Roland. Swing and be so 
Go on. Give me a best shot. Not bad. Again. I can't do it. I'm not like you. Umi, I don't need you to be like me. You just have to buy enough time to run. Come on. I believe in you. You can do this. Kind words in unkind times, my friend. Well met. The Blade of Frontiers at your... The man's smile bends downward, and his thoughts become yours. You are the Blade of Frontiers racing through the wastes of Avernus. Just ahead, a diabolical figure, red skin, single curled horn, blazes with flame, bloodied great axe held high. <sighs> Hell's great fires. You are on the ship. Better friends than the ones hitching a ride in our skulls, at least. I'm sure you know the stories. Doomed to shed our skin and become a lithid. They say there's no coming back. But we haven't sprouted any tentacles. Not yet, anyway. Could just be good luck. I'm not so. Your minds collide once more. Will chases the fiend ignited with rancor. She is an infernal war devil. A threat to the living. Evil incarnate. Shit! You saw her. Advocatus Diaboli. Advocatus Diaboli. A devil's advocate. A champion in the blood war between diabolical forces and demons. That ship sailed the sticks already. All I can hope for is to limit the damage. Her name is Karlak, an archdevil soldier I swore on my good eye to kill. I tracked her through the hells to the Mind Flayer ship, but the damned Elithids infected me before I could end her. She's out there now, preying on the innocent. I don't kill her, she'll leave behind nothing but a trail of corpses. Just so you know, my first duty is Karlak. I'm oath-bound to go after her. But I won't deny this infection is bothersome. I accept your invitation. I'd love to join, but I don't think there's enough space for me to squeeze in. The mind is strong, but the knees... Mm, well... They are a little sore. I'll gladly put my feet up. I like how you think. Hmm. The famous Blade of Frontiers in the flesh. Clever, this hero act you've got going. Hero, Blade. Name strangers gave me. My friends call me Will. Excellent. If we ever become friends, I'll know what to call you. Oh my, <laughs> this is going to be a fun journey. Any the pride of the gate.
out forever. This is no fortress, and we're no warriors. Remember, you have teeth and claws. All is ash and meat. That ox seems a little too interested in me. Huh? You're addressing me? A humble ox. How quaint. Something's off. This creature isn't what it appears to be. No. You are incapable. I'll tell you this much. I'm going to Baldur's Gate, with or without the rest of these poor sods. No, that's all I have to say besides, and I really mean this, Moo. Huh. Tick tock. Funny. Look, don't take your eyes off my hands. Please, let's th Let my daughter go right now! She's a thief, hell spawn. And you will wait for Corga's judgment. Now get back! Oh, let me through, Radrashem, or I'll rip your damn throat out! Give him a chance. You, get back. It's forbidden to outsiders. Corga's orders. No, and you'll find trouble all the same unless you get out of my sight. A moment, Giona. What? Oh, I understand. You. Apparently Corga wants to see you. Go ahead. Ah, oh, I do wish I could understand. Ah, my good friend. You were at the gates just now, no? When the goblins came? You saw them up close? A few questions, if you please. There's no overstating my interest. Glory. Now then. How would you describe that particular batch of goblins? Size, nature, distinguishing qualities? You search your mind, successfully recalling various details of goblin behavior. My, a scholar after my own heart. Spent much time among goblins. Shocking little creatures, aren't they? Still. There's quite a bit more to them than most accounts allow. I myself plan to record the world's most extensive catalogue of their means and habits. A blue ocean of information, I dare say. Now, I've a few more questions, if you don't mind. And the dragon they had marching in the rear, was it of the brass or silver variety? Dragon! How marvelous. Thank heaven you were here to specify, or I might have recorded a bold-faced lie. Last question, then you'll be quite free. Did the attackers rally to the absolute when they fell upon the gates? They did, didn't they? Oh, oh curious. Oh, curious indeed. I've interrogated one. A captive in this very camp. She reports they've abandoned their god, Maglaviet, in favor of someone called the Absolute. The scandal! Oh, I'd imagine him quite displeased. 
Since their change in allegiance, these goblins are informed by a kind of strategy anathema to their kind. I, for one, intend to get to the bottom of it. I'm just preparing to head to their camp as we speak, in fact. If you'll excuse me, I ought not to dawdle. Oh, never you mind. Who needs mercy when you've a quick tongue, hmm? And an invisibility potion stashed in your back pocket. Until we meet again. Just a moment. This man is recording my story. I am far from home. As the colorful man starts scribbling, the bear sneaks a quick look at the page. His brow furrows. Incomprehensible squiggles surround a crude sketch. A bear disemboweling a clutch of tieflings. Come on. All the druids can understand me. You can. Why can't the man with the pen? I traveled a long way. The man nods thoughtfully and adds another dismembered limb to his sketch. Shh! I'm concentrating! Does this look good? Is the coin in the middle? out a tentative chirp. Gaining confidence, he starts a song, abandoning his nest-building efforts. Madness, Korga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. A death viper. You have milked that poison before. A single drop of it could kill that child in a heartbeat. We will speak soon enough. First, judgment must be passed. The parasite eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Teela is restless. Come, Korga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. The snake's hiss of approval reveals its intentions. Should the child struggle, it is poised to strike. The death of a child. A timeless tragedy that never grows old. The words of the Tree Father spoken plain. It is as you say. Sivisif, Tila to me. Out, thief. My grace has its limits. <laughs> it hurts. Thank you, Korga. Master Halsin will... Halsin isn't here. Keep his name off your tongue, lest Teela pierce it. I know that look. You're wondering why I was in pain before. Let's just 
Clear the air about that now. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just something I have to live with. Quite a lot, if I'm being honest. But it always passes quickly, so I can manage. Another stranger come to vex me. What will you do? Hunt me? Grab my tail? Shout until my head hurts? No, wait. You smell fresh. Safe. You can stay, if you must. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? Monster? Too kind. A demon, more like. First you urge grace, then you speak truth. You surprised me twice over. A shame the grace period ends. The viper's fangs have been bared. She must guard her brood. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. The Rite of Thorns. It is the Tree Father's gift that none come to harm. When we speak the final prayer, the Great Vine will sprout forth. The grove will be cloaked in bramble and thorn. No one enters, no one leaves. Sanctuary. None of this can happen while outlanders infect us. Sylvanus demands that we choke them out. And mine perish if he stays. You showed great metal at the gate. The metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Sevlor. Offer to guide the Outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. You will do more than speak. This tale ends but one way. With the Outlander rot cleansed, and the grove forever shrouded. We might as well have lain on the ground and let them trample us.